it up to April 18, 2016. This is CISG 113, Section 1, Information Security and Privacy. Today is day number 25 in week number 13. So let's get started. The second week to the end of the semester, the second last week. So welcome back. Today we're going to have one more team to do team-based presentations. Uh, you have at most 30 minutes. And then, after that, we're going to have three speakers today. And each one of them is going to have the speech of the semester. The three speakers are Nicholas, Karen, and Hannah. Okay? So we have one hour to go. Without much ado, I'll give you five minutes time to get your team-based presentations to the air. You can come up here uh, to set up a computer or you can do it at your table in about three minutes' time. And if you notice that um, you already got back your midterm exam, all the scores have been returned, and you will receive your score for learning content number three starting from today to Saturday. One item per day, right? So all the items have to be graded. In the meantime, today I gave you the teacher's message for week number 13. It's important because that is what you need to calculate a score for your semester. Particularly for learning culture number one, if you look at the score allocations, you do not need to do the same for learning culture number two because we skip it. And then we have learning culture number three. You can see the score allocation for those items. You can calculate the score before the end of all. Well, hopefully it is weekend. All right. So, and then your midterm exam, and after that is the learn to learn activities, and after that is the in class participation score, and of course, including your speech of the semester. So, if you look at the scores allocations, you can see that in your learning portfolio, you're going to create a page particularly the front page, with those items indicated, and you can also indicate the number of scores earned already based on this particular table. Alright? The learning contract number one, ten percent, learning contract number three, twenty percent, learning portfolio, which you have to do, twenty percent, again, and then the learn to learn score, which include ten journals and five blocks, fifteen percent. Your midterm exam, 15%. The in class participation score, hopefully, you've already done 10 times in class sharing, and for each time, two points, you need to establish the records there, a table of 10 records. And then the five extra semester points for learning contract number three is being based presentations. And finally, is the speech of the semester. This is done by individually, and each one of you will be given 10 minutes. So three speakers today, 30 minutes. One last team to do the presentations, 30 minutes. So I'm going to stop now because you need the time. So is your team ready? Uh, Johnson, is your team ready? We need to get ready. What, how much time do you need? Okay? Yes, because time is ticking. So in about two minutes time, we have the last team. They're going to do the team-based presentations for learning contract number three. And then it's your time to do the speech of the semester. Now, according to the registry, come in. Yes, you're welcome to come in. Uh, starting from the 16th of this month, that means Saturday, to the 29th of this month, and that means I get next Friday, okay? You will be April to access the official student feedback questionnaire for this course in your student web information system. So please spare some time to complete that student feedback questionnaire. And we are going to reserve about 15 minutes next Thursday Okay, which is supposed to be the very last class of the semester for you to do it in class. And then we have one big up class on May the 3rd. We cannot do it on May the 3rd because according to the registry, the question there will be closed 
on April the 29th. Okay, so we need to do it within our last class of the semester, which is next Thursday. Okay, in about one minute's time, we have the team based presentations by task force number. It's number one or something. Over there. Alright, so we'll give you a, a little bit extra time. So, in about one minute time, I will be back and you can come up here to set up your computer. Exciting. Are you ready? Okay, when, this, when the team is doing the presentations, let's pay our respect and be quiet. Thank you. And listen very carefully. Please be seated.
ways to get people's money and information out Thank you. Iris?
this is me and Iris Bartlett of the topics. We have to distinguish the male boss. The males in the male boss seems we do not know the males are coming from where. When we receive some males are coming from unfamiliar um, males or unknown males, like some questionnaires, advertisement, prices, and etc., we immediately put the males into a junk box or never read it or open it. it it is because they may enclose some virus or some hacked system to our computers. And now, Iris will have a conclusion. Okay, we thank you. Winnie? We always need to confirm and stay calm to, to check carefully. This is the important key of for us to prevent not to fall in the world. Money transfer can be very useful if you want to send money to someone you know and trust. But at the same time, it is risky when you send money to someone you don't know. That's why then we call the enforcement and the agency's pressure against it. The, the recipient of money transfer gets the money quickly, so it is nearly impossible to reverse the transfer if you realize you make a mistake. Therefore, you can protect yourself, your friends and family by arming yourself with knowledge of the most common types of drugs. Yes. And now we have our videos for the money transfer. I'm selling bank transfer. I'm selling bank wire to your checking account. I'm selling money transfer. I can transfer funds from hacked bank account to your bank account. I have hacked bank account from various countries with high balance. I can transfer money from the hacked bank account to your personal and business bank account. Suppose. If you have any checking account, if you have any personal account, if you have any business account or saving account in the bank in any country, I can send money into your bank account. Your bank account may be in any country. I can do local transfer from USA to USA bank account to any other countries. I can send money from any country to any country. I can send money within the same bank, suppose. Chase to chase. I can send money from the same bank, but other countries suppose HSBC from USA to HSBC to UK. I can send money international wire transfer to any country, USA, Canada, UK, Europe, Africa, India, Australia, etc. I have admin access of the hacked account, so once I transfer the money to your account, I delete the statement entry of sender account now. It cannot be traced because no statement entry exists. You are 100% safe and secure. I transfer the money from the company's account where balance is very high. Millions and millions of dollars. So transferring small money to you cannot be noticed. Once money is transferred to you, it reflects into your account instantly and you can withdraw this money at the same time. I am experienced in this bank transfer game. So please follow me to get rich. I will guide you. I want to make you set price for bank transfer. Pay $2,500. And your account will be credited with $500,000. Pay $2,000 and your account will be credited with $100,000. Pay $1,000, and your account will be credited with $30,000. I do not work the small transfer. Waste of time, once you confirm your payment. It take 20 to 30 minutes to transfer money. Money will be transferred within 30 minutes maximum and it reflects instantly this is bank to bank online transfer. It does not need time to show up. I accept payment via perfect money and web money. I can accept Bitcoin and no cash voucher. I accept Western Union from my regular and selected customer. This information is needed to get bank transfer, bank country, bank name, bank swift code, routing number, 
bank account, number account holder name, contact me to buy, bank underscore trf at yahoo.com, skype equals bank dot transfer one. I am selling bank transfer, I am selling bank prior to your checking account. I am selling money transfer, I can transfer funds from hacked bank account to your bank account. I have hacked bank account from various countries with high balance. I can transfer money from the hacked bank account to your personal or business bank account. Suppose, if you have any checking account, if you have any personal account, if you have any business account or saving account in the bank in any country, I can send money into your bank account. Your bank account may be in any country. I can do local transfer from USA to USA bank account to any other countries. I can send money from any country to any country. I can send money within the same bank, suppose. Chase to chase. I can send money from the same bank but other countries, suppose HSBC from USA to HSBC to UK. I can send money international wire transfer to any country, USA, Canada, UK, Europe, Africa, India, Australia, etc. I have admin access of the hacked account. So, once I transfer the money to your account, I leave. Okay, we thank you uh, for winning.
you should never give your account number to anyone, you know, even to your closest, uh, even to your closest friends. You are advised to carry your card separately from your wallet. We can minimize the loss if someone steals your wallet during the transaction. Keep your eye on your card and make sure that no one stands too close to you. And remember to take the card back. And wallet bank, and wallet banking online will be outlawed. It can be dangerous because some of the free Wi-Fi that can be accessed by anyone and the hackers are easier to intercept the online transactions, password, or other private pieces. Do not respond to a questionable message. It can tell you to lock in your account immediately. So, um, what to do if your identity is stolen? Contact all your financial institutions immediately so they can protect your assist at your existing accounts either by choosing either by closing them or adding passwords and be sure to check all the companies that has an account in your name. If things are really going seriously, you can ask them to freeze the account. And everything should keep a record, including every communication with creditors and credit reporting agency. It is easier for you when you try to report a problem. And it will be better if you keep everything safe. Do not let people get a chance to steal your things away from you, especially personal stuff. And the next topic is the computer crimes. And uh, so, uh, if we talk about computer crimes, we often related to the computer security. And speaking of it, there are always benefits and drawbacks. The first thing that people would think of it is the anti-virus software or the firewall. So here comes the disadvantages. Sometimes firewalls can be difficult to set up. And some people do not know how to operate the firewall uh, correctly. They may have blocked users from performing certain actions in the internet. And another one is the weapons failures. Weapons and failures enables you to secure your home or business is, uh, with the use of the computer. However, these, uh, these cameras can be viewed remotely from your computer. These cameras are impervious to hacking. They can be shut off by a skilled intruder, leaving your surveillance target completely unobserved. And the last method is biometric system. Biometric system can commonly used in today's technology, which means we use our fingerprints as proof of identity. Using a fingerprint, facial scan, or even a DNA profile can greatly secure a system, as it is much harder to fake or crack than a password or software key. However, much like other token system, biometric devices require, require specialized hardware and software which can be expensive to install. In the worst case, people can somehow make you become unconscious by using drugs on you. After that, they can still use your friend brain to get access to your device. Um, in turn two, our topic is talking about, the, uh, as I mentioned, the credit platform and the computer crimes. Uh, we suggest that we all have to really pay attention to the online banking and it is better to install the antivirus software if you, uh, you, you uh, often use the uh, online banking books. And I'll uh, leave the next part to Johnson. Thank you, Sonia. Thank you. 
for the past long time was related by China West, West Coast. And government made operate illegal gamble when in Beijing and mobile bank successful service. Official news agency in Park know that most of those successful partners were foreigners. Showing him what is very useful, he is using kindness to other than to earn money. There are many types of charity bonds that is always common type. Such as internal for many charities, falsification of invoices or is generate the amount of his charge. External fault, it is used for invoicing to check money. Charity has plans. It is also common type they like is seen with people who get their privacy information. Even they use a stolen credit card. So if you encounter the charity board, please report to the charity commission. This is the end of our presentation. Okay, thank you Johnson and thank you all the members for doing a good job to help us to understand your work. Now, may I invite those three speakers who are going to make the speech of the semester to get ready. Each one of you will be given 10 minutes time. And according to the order, the first one is Nicholas. Okay, so Nicholas, would you please take your stage? Nicholas, the microphone. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Today, I will give you, can give the speech of the semester of this course. Uh, first, uh, let's uh, see the course objective. This is the uh, what we saw at the beginning of this course. The first is to help students become interested in the fundamental understandings of information security and privacy associated with the internet area, including concepts of both computer and uh, communication security, using modern day examples. Second is to encourage students to formulate and express their views on the design of information security and privacy through case study, written work, or presentations, and classroom discussion. The third is uh, to raise students' awareness of the impact of information security and privacy on the computer industry and the widespread purpose of voting security issues from rights applications through uh, critical discourses on the use of security communications for purpose for human endeavors. And uh, so I will check. So when I can get these three kind of objectives. Uh, from two aspects. First is the knowledge I learned from in this course, and the second is the learning skills I learned in this course. Here, as uh, our presentation before, the, the topic of our task force is the computer crime. So my part is mainly uh, talking about the cyber extortion. So I learned what is the cyber extortion uh, and uh, also, I learned a case study about the Sony Pictures Entertainment in 2014. This I have already told in the uh, in before. And also, I will, uh, I, uh, my part is about uh, how to combat in the computer crime. Uh, it's from three aspects: uh, investigation, registration, and uh, penalties. Um, this, from this kind, uh, this three kind of penalties, uh, we can. Uh, know how to combat the computer crimes. Also, Dr. Banner uh, provides many high technology in this uh, part. The most uh, 
attractive, attractive me is the uh, is the one and robot which which we published in February 24 this year. The called Atlas, uh, and uh, and uh, this uh, robot can uh, walk very uh, walk smoothly, and he can even walk in the snow ground, and uh, it has a very high tech. Have things. So even you push push the robot down, he can get back uh, uh, himself. I see a video about this robot. video you can see uh, this robot is uh, walking using its uh, two legs. I'm, uh, I'm a MST student and I know little about the robotic design. I know it's very hard to keep a balance of a robot. And this robot you only use two legs to keep balance. So it's a very high level. Mm. And uh, if you want more information about it, you can check the Wi-Fi public discussion form. It's, uh, all information is in, in that. And also, let's the next part is about the learning skill I learned in this course. The first is the idea of learning. It's called the in-cloud based learning. Uh, it starts by posting questions, problems, or a series, rather than simply presenting established focus and portraying a smooth place to knowledge. Uh, the process is often assisted by a facilitators, inquiries will identify and research issues and the questions to develop their knowledge or solutions. In fact, based learning includes the problem based learning and uh, is generally used in small scale investigations and projects, as well as the research. The in fact, based uh, instruction is uh, principally very closely related to the thinking and development. And uh, the pres presentation skill is the next uh, I learned in this course because there is about 10 chances to speak in front of all the classmates and teachers, and each time I spoke, my speech skill is uh, some kind of improved, and I, I learned a very lot from this uh, test speech. It's very helpful for my further study. 
And uh, also, because um, in the learning pattern 3 and the learning pattern 1, I have to team, teamwork with the impair team and the in the task force. And there is nearly 8 people in our task force, so I will arrange the time and work together with them. And uh, together doing the report, doing the, uh, doing the presentation and, uh, with them. And this is uh, needs a lot of teamwork and uh, it's very helpful in that. And also, so one of the features in this course is the journal and the blog writing. And uh, it's, uh, we can write the one, one, one journal and blog each time I learn something new. And it's uh, way better to reflect what we have learned in this week. And uh, also, these uh, this two things is written in English, and uh, this uh, kind of improves my English writing skills. And uh, finally, I will thank to Dr. White and uh, also my team, ma team, ma team members, Steve Chan, Steve Joe, Louis Ray, and uh, Devin, and all the classmates to give me a chance to speak in front of this to speech here. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. This. So we thank you, Lakeness, for making the first speech of the semester. And now it's, is it Karen? Thank you, Karen. Slide soap mode. Um, press the slide soap button at the bottom. Yes.
by reading those, uh, by writing those journals and reports, I spend lots of time to practice my English writing. Oh, and teamwork is really important things. I think I'm really lucky to have a great, great team, and all of my team members are really great. I like them really much, and I appreciate the time we work together. <laughs> Thank you very much, Karen, for helping us to understand your semester's learning. So it's Hannah, you're the first speaker today. Pick up the microphone.
Awareness Network is an type of computer network that uses learning data connection for connecting network nodes. And we even use it every day. But it's very dangerous for us if we look to public Wi-Fi. First of all, it's an intrinsic point province is public. Wi-Fi use visual waves and the visual waves are anything but they write. They force cars and this means that everyone within range can see everything you are doing online. So we should uh, connect to public Wi-Fi carefully. And uh, your final users might be in invited. Your final provincial portal might be running Windows at PSPI. Without any malware protection, putting your computer at risk of infection. And the third one is the Wi-Fi network might be a trap. If you connect to, to a network or something like free Wi-Fi, with no password required and no wear concern, it might be a trap. So we must be careful about it. Then I'll give you some types of words to look out for when using public Wi-Fi. First of all, it's choose your network wisely. And I think the second one is the most important one that is use a VPN. Correcting a VPN is one of the best ways to keep your browsing session and your device. A VPN link to encrypt traffic code between your device and the VPN server. It can protect your data. Very useful. And then the third second one is check for HTTPS. That the only thing goes check for the log in your browser to make sure it's secure. And the last one is push it up, check your apps. It's time to start forming some good partial habits. Keep your browser and internet connected device up to date with the last donations. And the we can upload it in network, not public Wi-Fi. And this is my presentation. Thanks for attention. Thank you, Hannah. It's a very interesting piece. As, we, as you can see, that eventually each one of you is going to pick up a topic of interest that you find interesting for you to spend some time doing some research, picking up some points of interest, sharing them with the whole class. And then you can see that today with three speakers, each one of them has given you a different picture of his or her own journey through this course. And I hope that with the coming Thursday, we're going to have different speakers again. Let's see um, who are going to be the speaker this Thursday, uh, so that we could uh, make sure that you can expect something. Before you come to make a speech, make sure you post the PowerPoint there so that we know what you're talking, all right? So let's see, let's see, all right, uh, who's going to make it on Thursday? 21st, yes, okay, all right, let's look, let's take a look at it. Have you signed yet? Looks like no one is going to, no one has signed for first day yet. Oh yes, there's one, Muffin. Are you there? <laughs> You're the fourth person. Uh, and then any more on first day? So far, not yet. Okay, that's good enough. We can expect at least one speaker. Now let's go back a little bit to today's, uh, this week. All right, so do you know what it's like play? It's an e-portfolio. Okay, so I hope that you can continue the stories of Emily. Remember Emily from the City University of Hong Kong? You watch her story behind the making of the e-portfolio. I would like to share with you a continuous two and a half minute. Oh, not this one. Welcome to Beacon Street. Not this one. This one. Emily is a freshman. She wants to use an e-portfolio to manage her learning. There are five steps she needs to follow. Firstly, she needs to think about what she wants to achieve during her university studies and make action plans accordingly. 
then she should actively participate in classroom learning, co-curricular activities, and make good use of the resources and support that the university provides. She should collect her work and reflect on her experiences and record the recognition and qualifications she receives. Although developing her ePortfolio is a lifelong process, Emily can always use her ePortfolio to get feedback from and collaborate with others. The immediate task can be to adopt an ePortfolio template. The template consists of four sessions, profile, summary, showcase, and qualifications. Emily needs to provide her personal details, a short description of herself, her values and beliefs, and interests and hobbies in this session. The profile creates the first impression that Emily's teachers and classmates receive from her. In the summary, Emily will identify the target audience and state the purpose of her e-portfolio and write down her goals and action plans. From time to time, she will come back to this session to summarize her accomplishments. The showcase session is where Emily records her work and experiences and organizes them with descriptions and reflections. Finally, in the qualifications section, Emily will list her educational background, scholarships and awards, co-curricular activities, work experience, and other qualifications. Emily should always be aware of the privacy issue. Emily will refer to the online technical guides and join ePortfolio workshops to enhance her ePortfolio development skills and strategies. So in the specific case of Emily's story, you need to consider the profile of your portfolio. So on the front page of your learning portfolio, you might want to introduce a little bit of yourself. You are a year one student or year two student, you are taking a general education course, which is within the curriculum of your chosen major. And the purpose of general education is to read our handbook and to see how many of those goals you are identifying with yourself. That is a little bit about your profile. Then you provide a summary. So what are you going to include in your summary? You need to ask the question, why I am doing this portfolio study, this course, okay? Well, if you take it from my work, I tell you that the reason why you do not need to write a final exam is because in this course, the university have proved that you do not need a final exam because you have chosen a learning portfolio approach. What does it mean? That means instead of doing summative assessment, which is a point in time to test on your student how much knowledge they could reproduce using a final exam paper. Now, <coughs> you have convinced your student to use a formative assessment approach to delineate your student's knowledge. Let them do it over a period of time. We use the first 10 weeks of the semester as the delineation period in which you run through free learning contract and in each of the learning contract you learn a very important learn to learn skill together with some content knowledge in this course information security and privacy. So it's really up to you to demonstrate how much you have learned. Now, based on the three speakers today, you know that in each of the speakers, they have chosen something to share with you. And that is a very good point in case to tell people that these students have achieved something with the specific knowledge and skills they pick up from this course. So that is the summary. What about the showcase? You did your learning contract one, you did your learning contract three, you did a little bit on the digital story. You can showcase some of the artifacts to accomplish in the portfolio to tell people that these are the evidence of my learning. These are what I achieved with the score I earned, all right? And I use this approach to design 
on divine agenda A, agenda B, agenda C, or whatever it is. Okay? So finally, when it comes to the qualifications, these depend on how much work you want to do. If at the end of each course, you would like to put together some evidence of your learning, some accomplishment together. So when you got your degree, you don't just get your degree, you can always back up your degree with a large number of evidence of your accomplishments throughout the years because of the course-wise contributions. So at the University of Macau, you have the Mahalo system, you have an account there. Actually, you can pool together your knowledge, your accomplishments, individual courses. Now that is part of your qualifications. So with that in mind, you see that in this little project called Learning Portfolio for this course, it actually can open up a lot of doors for you to develop yourself, no matter how many courses you're going to take. It's just a matter of, do you understand the meaning behind this? Okay? So if you understand it, let's take you to New York to take a look at the, the school kids there uh, by the time they finish their high school. Okay? I get a lot of reaction from Angel Point because I have a lot of stuff on it. And then they're usually like, wow, you've done this amount of stuff. Oh my god, this is crazy. And uh, I like that reaction because it shows that you're productive and awesome. It's really important in, in the education majors journey. It's not enough to just graduate with a degree unless you can articulate exactly what you're taking with you. And the ePortfolio gives students an opportunity to do just that. The ePortfolio, here at LaGuardia, is um, to collect your work, reflect on it, and just to have it in a central place where you can find it. It helps them learn about who they are, learn about what they can do, focus on their growth as a student, and then present that work um, to outside audiences. A new portfolio is basically a place where you can uh, show all your work from various different classes that you've taken throughout your entire college career. So you would upload either your best work or all of your work, depending on what you want to show or what you want to physically come in. You're able to have sort of this website that introduces who you are, what your goals are, what you would like to do with your life, and how you intend to do that in terms of your educational career. The very most exciting thing is seeing students come into the education capstone without very much experience on um, meeting work in almost everything, including the writing, and seeing them leave with the highest degree of confidence that you could ever expect. A good education portfolio should have uh, things that have to do with the AP standards, reflections on their courses, um, also a plan that they have for students, like services that they're planning on doing in one of their particular classes. So that's a good help for people that are planning to employ them because they see exactly what their standards are. They also use it to share that work with other students to get feedback on it, to look at multiple drafts of work, to collaborate with other students and create a joint projects together, and then to see the connections, to examine the connections between what they did in one course and what they're doing in another course. More and more colleges in the New York area are now interested in using portfolios, considering that as a way to evaluate is this a student we would like to take as part of our bachelor's? It allows someone to get to know who you are because you have a personal statement on there. You have your, your stated goals on there as well. So they know where you want to go with your career. And they also see the work that you've done and how productive you've been. When the education major leaves the education capstone with a new portfolio that's fully developed, I really get to see what that student knows and what that student is taking with them to the next level, which is usually the same company. I've shown my portfolio to the director of the CC Top program at New York University, which was a scholarship program that I was trying to get into. I went to the interview not even expecting to show her the portfolio, and when we started talking about my work and what I was passionate about, I immediately bought the portfolio, and I said, you know, you should check this out. I gave her the link, 
And she absolutely loved it because it gave her sort of a holistic picture of who I was, what I was interested in in terms of my career, in terms of my extracurricular activities, um, and also how well I did my work. I often say that in my course, it's not the grades that count, it's what students take with them and what they can acknowledge in terms of their own work. So I'm able to go back to my portfolio and look at something that I did in one of my freshman classes and see how my perspective on life and how my perspective on education has changed so drastically now that I'm a senior. So I think that's extremely helpful and it really puts your education in perspective and how much you know going to college really changes you. Very famous school in New York. I hope you got the message. All right. So I hope you got the message and understanding of this GE course. At this university, we also have already provided you with all those tools. That is very up to you. If you want to make the best use of it. All right. So I'm about to take attendance now, and then uh, after that, I let you go and come back on the first day for another round of educations, okay? Johnson, you're here, you don't, you don't, you don't, it's not here today, Star, Terry, not here today, uh, Iris is here, Christina is not here today, Gabriella, not here today, very busy there, uh, Sonia is here, Tina, not here today, or he, and then Cleo, not here today, Joey, Joey is not here today, right? Oh, she has to be Okay, that's good. Winnie is here too. Yes, thank you. Um, Shokwei, thank you. Danny, thank you. Nicholas, thank you. Carla, uh, thank you. Blue, thank you. Kareem is not here today. Ming Xian, thank you. Louise, Thank you. Steve Jow, thank you. Levine, Levine. Levine is not here today, okay. Serenia, um, thank you. Market, thank you. Brad, thank you. Yes. Michelle, yes, Fatima, here. Heidi, thank you. Karen, here. Erica, here, thank you. Uh, Yoga, thank you. Gambo, thank you. Wina, thank you. Ada, thank you. Steve Chen, thank you. Uh, Gia, thank you. Khan, thank you. Anna, thank you very much. See you back here on Thursday with any other question you have, okay? Very good today. We have three speakers in the last two do very culture down three presentations. And so that's it for today's uh, CISG 113, section one to two this first day, stay tuned.